Greetings, everybody. Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to Kenshi Shek's Conquest, Episode 10, Shek's Succulent Scullery. Oh, we are getting hungry, though. Very, very hungry. Some people still have food, like Trapper Keeper, so... I'm going to see about sharing. So, McNower, or Trapper Keeper, you have a lot of food. You can share some with Rackfin, who's, like, starving over there. And then, what about down here? Rain. Rain gives some to Poetic. Yeah, I think that's all the food we have. Yep. Very, very, very must. Am I planning to cook hashish? No, I'm not. That's not... Uh, so, one easy way to answer a whole lot of questions for yourself is... Would, does the Shek do it? And would the Shek ever do it? Because we are Shek, after all. And we're not really... Rein we're reinventing some of the wheel about abolishing the caste system. And, um... You know, we don't care about horns or hornless or any of that. But... At the end of the day, we're still Shek, so the Shek aren't thieves, they're not assassins, uh, they don't go dealing drugs. You know, humans are really the drug dealers in this in this game. Uh, humans are the ones that that uh, fill the swamp full of hashish. So you know, if we were doing a if we were doing a series playing swampers that make drugs, yeah, it makes sense. But for the Shek, no, the Shek are um, most notably warrior culture uh, that are honorable, you know, sort of like samurai. So, one easy way to answer all questions, or uh, many questions, is does this make sense for Shek culture? It's the same exact way, or reason why, um, we don't allow animals. Because nowhere in Kenshi do you ever really see Shek with animals. They did never ranch, they don't have animals, that's kind of a hiver and a human thing. So that's another reason why we made those rules. So we're, we're emulating, we're, in other words, we're emulating Shek culture, just sort of our slightly modified version of Shek culture. Um, but we're not deviating too far from those rules for many, many, many reasons. For balance reasons, for prog progression reasons, for, you know, role play reasons. Okay, uh, we have Rockfin doing a little bit of a food delivery before getting back to research. In fact, it goes so serious as every time you enter a Shek town, they, they check your bag for drugs. Um, that's something that obviously they're known to do. They bag check constantly. Further proof that, yeah, the Shek don't allow drugs into their society really at all. Um, and they're very, very strict about it. So, if they're strict about it, we will be too. Alright, so Trapper Keeper is going to haul to the weapon cabinet. Starving bandits are now hostile to me. Oh no! <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. They were always hostile to me, as far as I was concerned. And we are very close to... You know what? I probably will just buy some more building materials, if I can afford it, to just get the kitchen up. Because I know you guys are eager to see me do training of some sort. So I'll accelerate that if I can help it. Kenshi is very, very slow when you restrict yourself in the way that I have. Um, there's a lot of shortcuts, like stealing is quite the shortcut. And there's a lot of, like, free loot out there that you can just grab in ruins and the like, where you skip the first, I don't know, 30, 40 hours of the game trying to build up slowly. And uh, it's very much the reason why I haven't done that. So here's our little shack. And in this shack, we are going to put a cooking stove. Uh, this cooking stove is going to want a light source. Put cooking stove in there. A little torch post. Uh, cactus storage next to it. And then 
Uh, food storage there as well. Then if I go to in the interior, we'll do a, a round bar table in the corner with some stools. One, two, and another torch post. And that will be our tiny, tiny little cantina. So I need some additional building materials uh, for that, but we're working on that. And uh, that will allow us to feed ourselves. Trustin, thanks for the resub, buddy. All right, so with the cooking stove here, here's the queue. Uh, here's what we know how to make. We can make dried meat out of raw meat, obviously. Chew sticks out of water and cactus. Cooked vegetables, if we had green fruit. Dust witches out of bread and cactus. And rice bowls out of rice weed. So we're obviously, we're stuck with chew sticks, which are extraordinarily low nutrient foods. 20 nutrients each, but they're very cheap. It's just a bunch of um, cac uh, cactus. Eventually, we can get to bread, uh, but we're just not there yet. So, uh, we're going to repeat the queue doing chew sticks over and over and over. And then, Rain, you are going to cook as a top or second to top priority. So, her priorities now are the cactus farm, then cooking, a hauling to the water tank, and then operating the well. And then I'm going to, once the cactus storage is added, I will add those in as well. So... I am not... Entirely sure why she's not cooking right now. Well, I use the tables to eat. Uh, the tables are mostly going to be for idle people to. Oh, yes, this needs electricity. That's right. Uh, that's one research I haven't gotten yet. So, taking a look at that, um, we are going to want wind theory. I'm going to need another book for that. Well, here, let me leave uh, Rockfin alone. Trapper Keeper, you're going to be my errand person. Oh. Oh, that was easy. Okay. Win theory, here we come. Alright, wind generator theory. And that unlocks wind generators once it's uh, researched. Which will allow us to generate a little bit of power. And I'm going to keep the speed on full so that we can get everything else built. So there's the torch in there, and then eventually the rest of the processing the light. Dust switch meta when? Uh probably in the in the real base. This is just temporary setup. Alright, let's prioritize wind theory as the highest thing now and I'll just leave it on uh, max speed for a bit but yeah dust witches are very practical food source for highly efficient food source trapper keeper has not even made the first katana yet oh no she has I take it back here it is in her belt slot it has a sharp, so it is a rusted junk quality, which is bad. Um, but she's working on it. She's, uh, so as her weapon smith levels up, the typical quality, as you can see, I can't point at it, but right underneath the description over there, you'll see right now her weapon quality is rusted junk, but as her, as her skill increases, it will eventually match the level of my technology. So it, it obviously goes up over time. Uh, don't I need battery too? Wind doesn't always blow. Wind is actually pretty predictable um, early game, but yeah, I will eventually want battery as well. So here's a little wind generator. I need copper and iron plates for it. And uh, we can, I'll just stick it uh, right there. And then I'm going to uh, set my guys up to to get some copper again because I've been selling my copper like crazy. Oh, wow. Rockfin, no, don't be an engineer. He left the research bench to come help. Well, 
What is Kang working on? I don't even... I don't even know. I guess he's technically building, but like... Yeah, I just... He's using magic or something. Ha! Fang is insulting the Ocranites, the uh... Why are they shouting that battle is looming? Hold on, what's going on? Oh! Holy Nation Assault in a day and five hours. That's why they are angry. Because I failed prayer day. And whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 bad. Uh, Rockfin is getting beat up by a bunch of uh, the Holy Nation. I don't know where. I think this is the prayer day. Is there a priest in here or is this just a raid? Yeah, there's a priest in here. So this was the prayer day people that just like psych uh, circled back to me and decided to uh, pick a fight with, with me because they're jerks. So I'm running over to the rebel base now uh, for backup because I'm not about to take on paladins. As you can see, paladins are quite quick. If I can separate the rest of them from the paladins, my guys actually probably would be able to take out the holy servants because all they do is have the, they have iron sticks and um, that's not too hard for me to deal with. So let me... Uh, two, two paladins peeled off from that original group, so I'm going to keep running over to the uh, to the rubble bar. And let me save. All right, everybody up here, and I'm going to turn off jobs so no one's going to try to go back to work. Are they even hostile with them? They might not be. Why are the Paladins not coming in? I don't really know. We're about to f about to find out. Here's their servants. Is the Paladins downstairs? Are the Paladins... Where did the Paladins go? For real? Oh, oh, there they are. Uh, the Paladins are knocking out the Ninja Guard. Yeah, so if the Paladins are knocking out the Ninja Guard, I'm not going to want to stick around here. Um, but I don't really know if there's a place for me to go. Because Hub is not going to be um, all that helpful either. Hmm. Because this Rebel Base, you know, they're Holy Nation Outlaws, so they only really have so much fight in them. So I don't want to lure so many paladins that they get wiped. Um, I'm just going to go for a little bit of a roundabout out to... Ah, God, they keep hitting me. Out to the hub to see if anyone in the hub will fight. I don't want to hire the mercs if I can help it, though. But my guess is, as I lure the majority of the paladins away, uh, the bar will be able to defend itself. I just don't think the bar wants to take on all the paladins all at once. But it looks like the um, the trade ninjas, the ninja guard, are... I mean, some of them are down and out. But um, some of them are, as you can see, taking out the holy servants. Oh, this one's holy servants is almost dead. And then some of them are, are dueling the guards right now. So if I give the rebel base some time to collect themselves... Uh, it should be okay. I just don't want to get them to wipe out, wiped out because... Oh yeah, here we go. Here's another servant that's getting his butt kicked. And actually, all of us might be able to take on a paladin. Ooh, what the heck? Oh, there are two of them on top of me. No, hold on. I thought it was just the one. Kang, 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 stop it. Kang, stop it. Mr. Kang. No need for you to prove your metal. What the heck? Why is there a bunch of Garu in the... Okay. I don't know if these ninja... Trade ninja guards are gonna help fight paladins, though. Oh, no, they are. Okay, sweet. Alright, sc screw this holy prayer. Uh, is Poetic stuck down there? Where'd they go? Oh, they just, like, ejected themselves. 
Oh, because they're attacking the one at the gate. Ouch. He's not gonna... That's not gonna end well. Alright, I do have some people that are hungry, so... Uh, let me top up on food. So if we are gonna fight, at least it's not an empty stomach. And I guess that's all the food I have. Because some of our guys have some sort of hunger penalties, which isn't great. And here comes a High Paladin. And I'm going to take him on the roof. Okay, there we go. Yep. Perfect. So now there's a Ninja Guard. Ouch. There's a Ninja Guard that's hypothetically helping us. No, I'm not landing any hits. Let me just get out of here. Let the, let the, let the townies handle it. So I'm going to get my... My limbs lopped off. Like, look at Fang here. Just almost already losing a leg. God, these guards are not guarding, though. Yeah, so the some of the Prayer Day Paladins are leaving. But not all of them. Alright, if I get to the roof, perhaps the one that's chasing me all over the place gets aggroed. By... No, the barmen are just not doing anything. Come on, barmen. Do your jobs. There we go. Oh, they tried. I don't blame them for, uh, for not throwing down, because they are high paladins. They're not exactly, uh, pushover. Is he reassessing? Yeah, he's healing himself up. Alright, door's closed. Go away. Well, we're hungry and we're hunted. That is... the life, I guess. According to my map, it looks like they're moving on. They're moving back up to north to uh, Bad Teeth or Stack. I don't know where they came from. Uh, the rebel base here has not been wiped out. So everything is fine. Just had to deal with some, you know, BS, I suppose. And that's not even the raid that's coming in. We have another raid in a, in a day. So I have a little bit of a plan. My, my idea here is to try to invest in the base as much as I can in the next 24 hours. And then, after 24 hours, we are going to go on a bit of an errand. And, uh... And that way I'm just not around for when the, uh... the Holy Nation wrecking crew comes through. Ow. Oh, stupid... Are you kidding me? Stupid hungry bandits. never catch a break. I wouldn't have it any other way, but I can never catch a break. Oh, don't cut off uh, Rockvin's other arm. And now there's hungry bandits that are trying to bully me. Well, if we wanted to level up my, uh, <laughs> my medic, uh, yeah, we're definitely doing that. <laughs> Rain is housing them. She just killed two of them. Actually, Rockfin's not doing bad. He's landing some hits. Oh. Make it three. And here's the leader. There we go. Poetic lands one. I want to see Ruka land one with her big plank. And Rain lands one. And boom! Ruka takes that one. Alright. Rockvin, grab that blade. Yoinks. And uh, everybody get back to work after getting patched up. Kang's getting very, very hungry, so it's going to be important that I address that. Orin and McNaur, uh, you two are going to... Cancel your manual iron farmery. 
and mine the copper so I can get the uh, wind turbine up. So they'll they'll be my copper bros. And then as soon as I get the when I get the uh, wind generator up, I'll be able to start cooking at my cooking stove for two sticks. One will say on YouTube, uh, the first hour will air tomorrow, and then each successive hour airs the successive, you know, how it works. Or TLDR soon. Pretty much immediately. All right, Fang's back up. He's back to working the mining the iron. Um, instead of mining iron, process it. And now Ruka, with the engineering, is helping to build the wind generator. So that should be up soon, because Kang here is, uh... Oh, his jobs are off. Kang is, uh, hungry. Very hungry. Trapper Keeper, what the heck are you doing? I don't know what Trapper Keeper's doing. Now, if you're wondering about the goals, um, you could just read them for yourself. Look at that. Because it's on there. Well, sort of on there. Yeah, I guess you have to know a little bit about the lore of the game. But Shagger's conquest was to kill off the holy nation. So the lore of the, uh, of the Shek, the actual in-game lore is that the last leader of the Shag Shagger uh, waged a war against the Holy Nation and was losing because the Holy Nation have just a lot more people. So Asada of the Stone Golem overthrew Shagger thinking that the war against the Holy Nation was going to bring about the downfall of the Shek. And that's why uh, three splinter factions splintered from the Shek kingdom to form their own micro uh, factions. So if we take a look here, uh, Berserkers is a Shek micro faction. And uh, where are the other ones? I might not have met the other ones. But you, you have three uh, separate splinter factions that splintered off, led by Flying Bull, Ghost, and um, God, what's her name? Uh, whatever, I forget her name. The Crawl's Chosen Lady. Or not Crawl's Chosen, the um If I mouse over it, it'll tell me. No, I guess it won't, because I haven't actually discovered it. But yeah, so there's three splinter factions, and they broke broke away. So the Shek Kingdom right now is is very severed and in, in pieces. And Rockfin here wants to put them back together, in other words. What is Rockfin doing, though? Oh, I am not... Sh he's hauling to the iron storage plates? Why? I didn't mean to do that. That was a leftover from something before. So Trapper Keeper. Still working on the second katana. Takes a while. But we're getting there. As soon as, um, as, soon as we are able to start cooking for ourselves, I'm going to go on a bit of a march. So the wind generator is now done. Rain should be cooking, and she is. So here is my first chew sticks. Uh, we don't have even the storage for the chew sticks. Man, it is slow. But uh, yeah, at least we're starting to feed ourselves. And then the rest of this little micro cantina will get built. Deathco, thanks for the reset. Keep up the good work. I will try. I'm going to leave it on uh, times three speed for a bit, trying to speed through some of this research so I can get marching. I'm going to cycle through and make sure everybody's, everybody's working. So, Rain, have you made food? No. 
Oh my god. Chew sticks are, um, they cost a lot of, um, a lot of cacti. So they're, until I get a, a large field of chew sticks, it's, it's not a particularly, um, efficient method of feeding myself. It's just the one best suited to arid. She's made some, but she ate them. Yeah, okay. Well, she'll start making for other people. Eventually. Um, don't, don't worry, I'm not going to let anyone starve. So the electrical crafting is going to be very, very nice to have, because that allows us to process copper into electrical components, which sell for a pretty decent penny. And here we go. Here is um, a better katana. As you can see, the let me compare side by side. So we went from rusted junk to rusted rusting blade as Trapper Keeper uh, levels up weaponsmithing. So improvements, not huge improvements. Uh, Rockfin is going to go sell some of these weapons and, uh, and hopefully be able to purchase yeah, some rice for the those that are super starving because we really don't have much of a farm. Because Kang, I think, is Kang and Poetic. Kang is really, really hungry. So Kang and Poetic. Get them fed. Raid timer. So the raid timer is 16 hours, and then the materials trader is probably going to be here any minute. This, I think, is the materials trader. It's hard to tell what dot is what. It, it, the game doesn't really tell you. But. There. Trapper Keeper has the armor back on. And. I have a little bit more time before the raid shows up. And then I'm going to want to be gone. And the materials trader has arrived. I uh, I have a little bit of money. I'm going to spend a little bit of money uh, buying some building materials so I can get the little cantina built. Just to try to speed things up a bit. Ooh. I might buy the hemp too. Because that way I can start a, hemp, a research for hemp. So I bought some of the uh, research books as well. And Ruka will go make a delivery. So, Ruka, let's go make the delivery, because if I'm able to make hemp, uh, that means I can make my own medicine and sleeping bags and things like that. Clo some basic clothing. Um, good good stuff. Where are you going, Rockfin? Oh, Ruka's under attack. Yeah, you're going... Oh, it's just a just a ex-slave, hungry, starving bandit. Yeah, no, no, okay. Passive. Go back to work. I feel like Ruka's always the one that's getting attacked. People just love to, to pick on her. So for farming, let's do hemp farming. And um, then for crafting. Do I already have the hemp processing? I forget what it's called. Maybe I do. I'm trying to think of other things that I'm going to need to uh, unlock. Let's do first aid kits. I think the, the hemp processing... Yeah, hemp-based fabrics is already uh, queued up. Cool. So hemp farming, hemp-based fabrics. But don't worry, I'm not going to just be farming the whole time. I just... Let's see. Let's see what we can do. Let's spice things up a bit. I think our best bet uh, for a little bit of quick cash and action uh, after I have people just heal up would be to find the nearest Dust Bandit group and beat them up. So 
So on the the Holy Nation Assault is in 13 hours. So I'm going to try to speed time along. And I think what I'm going to do is try to get L's. So here's a question for you all. Should I make a march out into the Great Desert or L's? L's is a Shek fugitive hiding in Sho Batai uh, where I started this whole mess. And I could... Um, I could go recruit him if you guys want. So I'll put a timer on that. And that, the one of the benefits of that task is it would have everyone um, go train their athletics pretty considerably because it is a long way to show Batai. That is a, that's a long march. So that's good for athletics. And then after we do that, I can start training um, strength. So that I'm doing both. And here is my finished cantina. It's pretty pathetic, but it's what we got for now. Rain is mining up some cactus, and she'll turn that into chew sticks. What I need... Oh, McNaur and Orner are under attack. Oh, just by a little band. He's already dead. Of no consequence at all. Wow. Good job, dudes. Okay. I am sufficiently hungry, though, so I'm going to have McNaur and Oren stop... Um, copper mining and bring in these 20 pieces of copper uh, to sell for food because we are we are hungry. Am I still wanted there? No. The, unless you build up a bounty of like 10k your bounties are like for 48 hours only or something like that. They're pretty short. So I'm not going to be wanted out there. It'd be really unusual for a bounty to last that long. Unless it's a permanent bounty and you only get permanent bounties if you've been really, really naughty. Which I have not been. I've been pretty good. <laughs> Look at this poor guy. Defending against those paladins. They nearly lopped his arm off. Alright, so I'm here just buying basically all the food items I can afford so that I can bring it back to the rest of the group and uh, and have people feast. And it looks like you guys want me to do the run out to Shopatai. Happily, I will. All right, so another way to feed everybody is to stick the food items into the food barrel here. And then have people take it as they please. It's a very, very, very efficient way of doing it. So I'll do that in just a minute. And then while we do that, I'm going to single out some individuals that are a little hurt. And uh, send them to our solitary bed. Yes, our entire community shares a bed. Let's hope no one gets lice. Except for, I guess, whatever the horn equivalent of lice is. I don't even know. And there we are. We have some food stored in the food storage. And now uh, anyone that is hungry will go grab it. So Kang, as you can see, is running over to grab some food. There he goes. Ate some Gohan and now he just goes back to work. It's a really, really efficient way of feeding people when you have uh, food storage like that. But um, he's engineering. What is he doing? I'm, I'm, I, I need to know. Where are you going, dude? Oh, I had a torch out here? No, 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 forget that. See? They, they are so good that they remember things that I don't. Like, a random torch way out in the middle of nowhere that I had placed long, long, long ago. And they're gonna remember it, but I'm not. Alright, so now we have electrical crafting. That's a really, uh, awesome one to have. The time to raid is nine hours, and uh, with electrical crafting, I'm going to definitely want to get electrical workbench up. They're rather small, and I think what I'll do is put uh, copper storage here next to the iron storage. I wish they stacked. There's a mod that allows uh, box stacking, but I'll stick that. Right in here. I also am going to space it out enough so no one gets stuck in the middle. 
because that's totally a thing that can happen, and it's really frustrating, because then you have to have someone run over and pick them up physically, and then, like, place them up where they aren't stuck. So when you're architecting, like, this was one of the issues with the snail house, because it's circular. It's uh, It can be a little annoying. So then we have the copper storage, and then the electrical component bench, and then storage for electricals, which is really small, so I can probably stick that in here. And those, get those built. And that will make us lots and lots and lots of money. Uh, because uh, processing uh, copper into electrical components is a, has high yield. That's, uh, that's a money maker. Okay, so Kang. Did you make any chew sticks? Oh, I wouldn't even know, would I? Oh, yeah, you did. Okay, sweet. So we're starting to actually get chew sticks that she isn't gobbling herself immediately. Uh, let me hide that pole, because it's obviously we are going to go. And um, I'm going to spend the next, like, five hours doing some research. And then we're going to bounce. We're going to bounce to Shobatai. Now that everybody is no longer malnourished, they're fed. And they're healed. And we're going to go get L's. L's is... A very unique shack. Most, most people like L's, but not everyone. Trapper Keeper doesn't even have work to do because there is no more iron. But uh, we are getting hemp farming. So if we take a look at hemp farming here, we go to farming, hemp. Uh, arid is about a 50% yield for hemp. So it's, it's manageable. It's okay. It's not great. I'm definitely going to need to buy a whole lot of hemp if I want to start a hemp farm. Uh, another thing that we're going to want to do is to expand the cactus farm or start like an XL cactus farm. Start a big one so that I start to get some actual yield. Take a spare uh, uh, wood sandals? Yeah, I've already done that. You and I are in the same wavelengths. Because it's going to be, uh, it's going to take a while to, to run him home. So Trapper Keeper, instead of actually weaponsmithing with this iron, I'm going to work to build the copper processing. Because, like I said, that, that will help us bankroll uh, future investments. And all of this would be so much easier to do if it was all under one roof. If I actually had a base. The problem is, um, I'm really not at the a point yet where I can like defend a base. And I really don't want to have to constantly retreat because it's embarrassing. So, you know, I've been asked a few times, when am I going to actually base up? Oh, God, we're under attack. It's Hungry Bandits again. I think this is a good cue to leave. I obviously can take Hungry Bandits, but um, it's it's a good time to to go on our, uh, on our little quest. So I'm going to grab the remaining food that is in storage. Um, grabbing the iron plates that haven't been processed yet. And everyone's going to rendezvous up here at the base with Trapper Keeper and Rockfin. And we're going to head out to Shobatai again. I know it's crazy going into the uh, the desert after having finally escaped it. But head to Shobatai is now our goal. Did they follow me in? Oh, you little bastards. Another thing to note is some weapons, maybe Ruka's weapon, because it's huge, are bad indoors. Yeah, see the indoors penalty? The negative six there? What that means is when you use this weapon indoors, you suffer a penalty because it's massive and it's hard to wield inside. Um, it's not something we really need to worry about right now, but later on, when we're fighting really powerful enemies, managing your indoor penalties can be important because you can definitely nerf yourself by forcing yourself indoors when you don't need to be. And here we are taking turns uh, beating up this stupid hungry bandit. Thunk. And let's uh, throw them out of home. Which is a task you can queue up. 
because I don't want them squatting. And now we are good to lock up and head to Shobatai for some L's and, and possibly make other pit stops. Uh, why are you... Ooh. Ooh, no, 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 no. Okay, um... Hold on. Not yet. I didn't realize McNair was uh, encumbered. Let me make sure that no one has anything they shouldn't have on them. So, Fang, you should ditch your uh, iron plates. McNair, I'll just sell the katana and the, uh, the ore. And Ruka, ditch the iron plate. Okay, and that's it. Because we don't want to be encumbered. We're going to get that out there. Um, our ETA depends on whoever moves the slowest in the group. Because obviously I'm going to travel as a group. As a squad. What I... Uh, endearingly refer to as the asthmatic uh, toddler squad. When you're low level. So who moves slowest? 19 miles an hour for Mechnauer. Yep, I think 19 miles an hour is our slowest for McNauer. So, Trapper Keeper was originally slower, but uh, Trapper Keeper went for a bit of a jog. And... Uh, we're going to take the sort of southern route. Uh, as you can see, there's not a lot of roads that go east and west. The Deadlands is full of acid, and it will melt our feet off. This here is heavily guarded by the Holy Nation. You can swing way north, but it's a little sketchy and it's full of cannibals. Um, going through short of Shem is probably the easiest, as long as you stay clear of the swamp. Yeah, Verge and Vengeon and I, uh, as long as we don't spend too much time in the eye to get to Shobatai. That's the plan. All right, who's hungry? Poetic is hungry. Let's toss you some food. I'm I'm definitely on my trip out there. I feel like we're we're departing for let me let me adjust my sound so we can really appreciate this. I feel like I'm departing like Lord of the Rings style here. Uh I'm gonna raise some of these bars up. If only there was rocks to ride. And I'm just gonna call this back up just in case something like horrendous happens. All right. I'm going to need to make some money on, on the trip there. That's for sure. So. Oh, and here comes. I think this is the Holy Nation raid. The Holy Nation assault. Yeah, it's definitely the Holy Nation assault. They're going to arrive at an empty base. Screw those guys, right? So in order to make a little bit of money on the way out there. Um, I could do some mining outside of towns and sell to the town. Whoa! Jesus. Okay, that scared me. <laughs> Whoops, there goes gravity. And she's amazing, but it is not bug free. <laughs> it's so crazy. Will they mess with the base? now? I wish that raids did stuff like that. Oh. Oh, hello. Yeah, let's do this. Alright, this is obviously going to slow down my approach of L's. But I'm not going to deny a fight. So what I'm doing here is I'm having some of the guys in back. Oh, uh, definitely no one should be passive. Sorry. Of course, it cues up the one song that blows my ears out the moment I touch the music slider. Because I was saying, as I was saying, uh, we're going to need a little bit of money, right? Why not just take their gear and sell it for money? We're doing really good. So you remember, you remember just a few hours ago, a group of um, dust bandits like this would, would nearly smoke us. And I'm not going to say that we're going to get away with away from this fight without any knockouts but I certainly think we're going to do a lot better job 
this time than previous. And the thing is, there's a uh, way station that we can heal up at. And yeah, we're already starting to knock them out. So here's one that got knocked out by yours truly. And uh, I'm going to immediately strip the armor and wear it. Uh, is there a boss anywhere? And here's another one. Ouch. Where's the boss? There might not be a boss in this. Oh, yeah, here's the dust boss. McNaur is uh, dueling him. His, his gear quality is going to be better, so I'm probably going to give that to uh, Rockfin. I mean, it seems fair, right? Oh, look at them crippled crawling around. Oh, posture check. I'm so bad at those. Wow, Fang just took his first hit. I mean, I'm certainly not unscathed, but I am definitely better off. Hey, don't forget the guy on the ground. Mr. Diaper Baby there. Doesn't it look like he's wearing a diaper? He better be. It's about to be brown. And then red. And then brown again. Mid-grade salvage. Uh, I'm sure some of the... Here. Yep. Blade quality's up. So actually, I will say, um, no KOs. We certainly have a lot of damage to our limbs, but uh, we do not have any KOs. Not a single one of us got knocked out. Every single one of them got knocked out. Flex! Yeah! Rain's gonna be a little slow, because she's, uh... Her, her legs got knocked out a bit. Uh, and let's let's loot them, because of course, uh, looting them is a t you know a double-headed or double-sided uh, benefit, where if they do recover, if they do get back up, um, they won't have weapons, so they're very harmless. Unless you're fighting a martial artist, a properly skilled martial artist is frightening. Um, but unless they, if, unless you're fighting a martial artist, disarmed enemies are a bit of a joke. Loot, loot, loot. Who has space? Yeah, we just made our money. We just paid our trip out to Shobatai. It's as if I summoned them. It could not work. have worked out any better. Roof rain, you have some space. Rain is uh, a little slow. Her leg took a bit of a battering. She'll be okay. Can you give a martial art artist a weapon to disarm them? Um, you could actually. Now that I think about it, I suppose that would be possible. If you knocked a martial artist out, you could stick a weapon in their hands so they use that weapon. A lot of what makes martial arts really dangerous is they also tend to have really really high dodge. So even if you gave a martial artist a weapon, doesn't necessarily mean you've, like, disarmed them, because they could just super dodge. Constantly dodge and prevent you from being able to do very much. Alright, so I believe we've stripped them all. And let's continue the way station. Uh, the slowest is definitely going to be Rain, because she's, um... She's hobbling on one leg. And so is Poetic, but Poetic's faster. Which is funny, because um, that's how I feel like in real life. Look. I, too, have a brace on my ankle, so <clears throat> I know how they feel. <laughs> Oppity. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, no, no. More of them? Uh, okay. Um... Yeah, taking one group out is... Okay, there we go, I scooted around them. <laughs> one group is fine. Uh, well, multiple groups with no recovery time, yeah, it's a bit bit different. Won the battle, lost the war? Nope, nope, nope. 
It's called the Loot and Scoot for a reason. Alright, another thing is, do we have a spare mid-grade salvage weapon? Because if we do, I might want to change to it. Rusting blade. Uh, rusting. Rusting. No. Okay. Alright. And then I'm just quickly checking the quality of the armors to see if, if any of them are non-shoddy. Um... I would slap them on, but I think everything is sheer. Sh all the helmets and uh, heart protectors that I don't have equipped are shoddy. So, can completely ignore. Alright. Onward! And then we'll get to the way station and uh, hop in one of their beds and accelerate time like you've never seen. The Holy Nation Assault... It's still upcoming, which is a little strange. Is it worth expo training? Not yet, no. We might actually have crossbows be illegal and never use them. So again, I'll remind you of the form. Uh, we're voting on any of the restrictions and rules of the series. So being allowed to use crossbows is amongst the rules. And we might restrict crossbow usage so that we never ever have crossbow people. As of challenge, because crossbows are the most powerful, some of the most powerful weapons in the game. They can be. They're not. You know, it depends who has them equipped. If uh, a complete idiot who is blind has them equipped, obviously they're not going to be that useful, but crossbows are not all that balanced. Let me make sure that I'm selling everything that I'm supposed to be. Thank you for tuning in to Kenshi Shack's Conquest, which originally streamed live on Twitch October 14th. If you have any feedback for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to all of my Twitch subscribers and Patreon patrons for supporting the channel. I'll catch you next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell.